is love is love on the queer family podcast love is love we're busting the myths we're busting the stereotypes and we're showing this is what this is and this is only one version of what this Mm -hmm. is and there is beauty in all the versions hello hello welcome to the queer family podcast my name is jamie and i'm your host and you are tuning in my friends to the queer family podcast pride extravaganza what's that what's that you ask Well, that is, for the entire month of June, the Pride Extravaganza, we are pushing out double the episodes for your listening pleasure. So instead of just one episode per week, you're going to be getting two episodes, one on Monday, one on Thursday, the entire month of Pride. And the guests I have coming in and who have come in are some of the most amazing guests I think I've ever spoken to. Actually, I love all of my guests equally, but these, oh my God, these folks, I feel honored and privileged to even be able to speak with them and to share their stories with you. They're all change makers. They're all being visible on their platforms in order to make this world a better place for us and for our children. And I am inspired and in awe of them. And uh, today's guests are no exception. Richard and Carlos, aka the Real Dads of New York. If you're not following them, you need to follow them because they're super fun on social media and they they use their fun actually to educate folks. They they actually call themselves stereotype busters because well, shockingly, not shockingly at all. They do get a good amount of hateful comments, which is not a shocker at all, but it is frustrating and infuriating. But they rise above and they use humor um, to to just bust myths and, and stereotypes that folks have about them and about people in general, which is so annoying. So they, they're two Black Jamaican men who have built their family through private adoption and also foster to adopt. So they have two little cuties. And their children are actually lighter skin than them. And that's one of the things they get hate about, which is infuriating. And mm, there's, you know, systemic racism exists and it exists on all fronts, right? And uh, I just am so in awe of this. This conversation really turned into, we talked a lot about the need for advocacy and the need for education and the need for kind of overhaul of some of our systems that are not serving us or our children. And I don't want to say too much. I'm going to let them say it because they say it went way better than me, but they really got me thinking about the things that need to change in the world. They're change makers. Here we go. They're changing the world for the better. And I am just so in awe of them. They also, we talk a little bit about coming out and one of them had a particularly hard coming out. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm going to let you listen because it's a beautiful story and they're just beautiful people inside and out. So before I roll the tape though, as you know, I got to get some business out of the way. So if you really love what you're hearing, please feel free to join my Patreon. I have various tiers on my Patreon. They started just two bucks a month. Super simple, super, super easy. That's where you're going to get bonus content and you're going to get the video episodes dropped a day early. So you'll be in the know before everyone else. And also, don't forget, we do have video episodes now of every single episode. Those are all alive on our YouTube channel at the Queer Family Podcast. We are actually on social media across all platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at the Queer Family Podcast. And you're going to get the video episodes um, on YouTube. And if you're watching the video episode right now, you can see, as I have been for the entire month of June, I am all prided up. I got my pride bandana. I got my pride flag flowing behind me. I need to get, I have my pride stickers on my headphones, Queer Family Podcast. Don't forget, you can get my merch. I have stickers. I have shirts. I have mugs. I have all kinds of things at my merchandise store at tpublic.com slash the queer family podcast. So go over there, get that stuff too. do all the things. And don't forget to subscribe, rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts, because that helps us push this super important stories out to an even wider, broader audience. And that's the whole goal. That's the whole goal to normalize, uplift, highlight our families, because we're intentional AF and we're freaking beautiful. And that's it. All right. So Pride celebrations are around the corner. New York Pride is coming up in like a week. I am not ready. I haven't figured out what we're doing. I think we're going to go to the parade, but I'm not going to lie. The stuff that's going on in our country makes me a bit scared to bring my children 
to pride celebrations. How sad is that? How sad is that? So I haven't decided, are any of you grappling with that? Like, are any of you afraid? If it's just me, it's one thing, but bringing my kids in, in, in a possible, you know, I, I know I live in New York. I live in this, this really safe bubble for our community. And, you know, everybody says, oh, please, you know, it's New York City. The cops aren't going to let anything through. It just takes one. And, you know, the Proud Boys have said they're going to bust into all the Pride celebrations and try to ruin them. I don't know. I, but I am. Are any of you nervous about it? I don't know. Tell me. Let me know. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do for Pride yet. We might just have a little house party with friends and a lot of rainbows because rainbows. That's why. Because rainbows. <laughs> Anyway, all right, it's time for me to roll this tape. I love y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Richard and Carlos are going to wow you. And I can't wait for you to hear their story. I'm just going to ask my fake assistants, Helen and Beulah. Helen and Beulah, can you please roll that tape? Thank you. I don't have assistants. I can't afford them. But, but if I did, they'd probably be better than Helen and Beulah, who actually really hate me. I'm just kidding. They like me a lot better than they used to. Okay. Helen and Beulah, my loves, can you please roll that tape? Thanks, darlings. Rolling their eyes in. <laughs> they don't even exist. Okay. Roll the tape. Here we go. Queer family podcast. Love is love. Hi, Richard and Carlos. Hi. I am thrilled to have you here. This has been a little bit in the making. I'm not going to lie. For a while. We kind of stalked while. you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, hey, did you read that? Hey, are you coming? Hey. Well, you, we actually met before I was even a That's dad. That's true. So. Let's talk about that. You used to work for Success Academy here in New York City. I did. When I met you, I was a superintendent at that time. So I was managing a cohort of schools. Yeah. You were like big boss. And you were like kind of scary to me because you were like, <laughs> you're very, I mean, you're very precise and to the point and you use your words wisely. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to, not going to mess with Richard. And I'm like, actor <laughs> artists coming in I'm, okay okay i'm gonna do what richard says and the funny thing is that people probably think i'm big and this big jokester <laughs> which is at work i'm a very it's a it's a it's, it's another chapter in my you're book, very buttoned say. up you always look gorgeous I, I mean that's like in well, everyday life but like i was like okay richard it's richard today okay i gotta be i gotta be on it <laughs> but but for a background for all of you at home i uh was an actor trainer for success academy so i would like play parents who are like angry at the teachers mm -hmm. <laughs> and we would like and role, the principals and we used to role play yeah. conversations it was a very interesting job and very fun and we went at it a few times we, yeah we, we did right oh my god i know we how did. to argue richard but so do you you do you know how to win an argument you do yeah i know how to win an argument exactly <laughs> we'll ask him that question <laughs> it's a little different with your spouse okay at, ho at home it's, it's different at home. at home it's different i'm sure i, I don't argue as much I can only imagine. No, you got to compromise. Like it's it's a dance at home. Totally different thing. Totally different situation. Okay. If you don't know who Richard, I didn't even say, oh my God, the real dads of New York. Now you probably know who, who we're talking to here. But if you don't know who they are, you're living under a rock. And I've been following you since I worked with you at Success. I've been following. Yes, it's been that long. Yeah. It's been f like five even years. Even before I think we got married. And actually, right after I, we got married. So, yeah. 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 And this year makes eight years married. So, yeah, it's been a long time. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. It's time to do the elevator pitch. You're going to give us your 30-second elevator pitch of who you are and why you're here because you're going to say who you are way better than I am. I just mess it up. So, I'm going to I'm gonna count you in. I'm going to say go. And you're just going to go for it. And it's no okay. pressure. I'll never cut you off. All right. it's all and I'll be concise because that's just that's on brand for me. you are, Richard. Okay. On your marks. Get set. Go. Hi. I'm Richard. I'm Carlos. And we're the Real Dads of New York. And we're here to talk about how two Black Jamaican dads became dads. Boom. Okay. Okay. Nine seconds. That's the fastest one yet. It was very precise, <laughs> very to the point, And that's all you had to say. That was amazing. That's the fastest one I've ever had yet. And it's been... I like winning. It's over 200 episodes, y'all. So I like winning. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. So, Okay. Let's let's take it back to Jamaican dads, to Jamaican husbands. Let's take it back to the beginning. Oh, I know there's a story here. How did y'all meet and when did it all start? Oh, boy. 
Okay. Well, this is a judgment free zone, right? Yes. Okay. So we met um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was 16 years old. And for those of you who are wondering, because this luscious man has some gray hair, there is a bit of an age difference between us, 15 years to be exact. It's not that big of a difference. And no, it was, well, when you're talking about a 16 year old and 15, you know, right. But that's not when the love story started. That's how we met, yes. right? There's a difference between love story and actually understanding that we both exist, mm-hmm. right? He, he pursued me. Okay, ah, I didn't pursue you uh-oh. at 16. See, this, this, is what, this is why people, this is why people think what they think. Do you get, do you get hate? Like, do you get crazy? A lot. Really? Yeah. A lot. Oh my gosh. Because, you know, look, think about it, yeah. right? In the gay community, specifically with men, there's this perception and the stereotype that an yeah, older that man is. will groom a younger man to the, that's just what the right. stereotype yeah, yeah, yeah. is. Totally. And if you look at our bio, we try to be stereotype busters because if you think a stereotype is one way, we're going to show you that it's actually not That's that way. I love you. Even if your limited perception of the world makes it true for you, right? right? So, no. So you met when I was 16, uh, professionally, right? I was trying to model. I thought I was cute at you the time. You are cute. Car- thank you. <laughs> and Carlos is a fashion designer. And so he had a casting call. But the casting call said that you had to be at least 18. But I'm a rule breaker. <laughs> And so I was like, well, I'm going to submit anyway, because he didn't say that parental consent wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got. I got parental consent. First, he denied it. And then I was like, well, you know, I can have my mom join if that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, But I should be casted because why not? Mm -hmm. Um, So I won't bore all the details. But yes, we ended up working together. Then fast forward. Oh, gosh. About a year. We were both with people at the time. Mm -hmm. I was in my first like real relationship, which was absolutely terrible looking back very unhealthy Mm -hmm. um he was also in a relationship at the time and we found friendship in that right like being able to um well he caught me in the village if you know in new york city Mm -hmm. christopher street back in the day the village was not a place that a 16 or 17 year old should be yes unless you're going to school there unless you're going to school which there weren't many schools in that area for my age group at least at the time at that time of night at that time (laughs) Correct. Well, no, it wasn't the night. It was the day. day. I cut school. I cut school. Uh-oh. Mom, don't listen. Sorry. Um, I cut school <laughs> um, and I went and that's where I saw him. So it wasn't like anything salacious was happening, but I just still wasn't supposed to be there at that time. <laughs> supposed to be in school learning things. Mm-hmm. And he like, he like chased me out of there because he was like, you shouldn't be here. You should be in school. And by the way, what are you going through while you're cutting school? Which led to the conversation about what it is I was going through with my ex at the time. And he confided in me about what he was going through with his ex at the time. We worked together uh, a bit after that. But then around, I was like 20-ish, turning 20, we had another conversation. Mm -hmm. And we were still with those same people. Oh, no. Still unhealthy. Still unhealthy. So we're talking four years now Uh with the same people. Not not very healthy. And I was like, if you can do better, why not? And by the way, hi. Hi. Right here. I said, so when and if that breaks up and when and if my situation breaks up, give me a call and we'll see what, what happens. And then. The next day. They broke up, and I was there 30 minutes later. It was about a week and a half. You ago. waited a week to tell me y'all <laughs> broke up, but you, when I was informed of the news, I showed up within 30 minutes. Oh, I love it. Was paperwork printed out? Of oh, Florida? yeah, because he was like, oh, I want to move to Florida, which... No, I told you that was the deal break. If you don't see yourself... Well, well in Florida, I did. By the way, New York City, though we are the real dads of New York, we do live in Florida, yeah. and winter 2017 almost took me out. Mm. I do not like the cold weather. I do not like snow. So Florida, he didn't have to really say much. Well, because especially if I you have there. a house that you got to shovel snow. Yeah. Immediately no. Like yeah. three, four Immediately times no. for the day because Immediately you're no. responsible for the sidewalk. No. I'm like, I'm over this. No. I don't like the <laughs> so snow So we either. met under those conditions and have been together for this year makes 17 years. Whoa, 17 years? Mm-hmm. Congratulations. 17 years. Wow. Thank you. Feels like 50. Feels like 50. <laughs> okay. well, I'm sorry you feel oh, that way. I you would you know guys. what it's like to feel 50. I know. Oh, jeez. Oh, here we go. All right. So it all works out. You're a beautiful couple. You've been together basically for you're basically forever. And you said you're both a Jamaican. So like it's Richard, you grew up in New York, right? I did. Uh, though he would call me Jamaican. I have a Jamaican mother, an American father, but I was raised for four to five years, almost five years in Jamaica. And Carlos when I was younger. like shaking his head. Which is a it's a fraction of it was a what very it really takes to it was be a very formative experience. Wait, well, Richard, how happy was your Jamaican mom that you found yourself a Jamaican man? It was cool, and things that she knew Carlos from that instance oh, right, of modeling for of him, modeling. and so and so he wasn't a stranger. And in, in, interestingly enough, she and my father had the same age difference between them, right? And so it wasn't like she was 
new to the world of age gap mm -hmm. relationships. She too didn't necessarily find guys her age to be that appealing because of maturity and blah, blah, blah. Not that older people equals maturity. No. We both know yeah. that. But, but, but it was, he was familiar to her. She had to get to know him in different contexts, but he actually asked her if it was okay with her to date me before we officially started dating. Oh, so, good job, Carlos. Yeah. I'm very old school that way, I guess. And then, um, Carlos, you grew up in Jamaica. I grew up in Jamaica. I left Jamaica when I was 13. Oh, wow. So you've been um, here a long time. But again, my experience, my family, it's been by birth that Jamaican accent comes out on occasion. So you've been, you, you, you both been living that gay life for a while, even before you met, basically. Well, yeah. Richard. I started out late. Started late. I came out, I came out when I was 10. Oh, wow. So I was you knew. in the fourth grade. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it was very, it was very clear. Yeah. To me and maybe to everybody else. And Carlos, you came out when you were 35. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Why, why do you think it's it took different. so long? I've always had bisexual feelings. I mean, the attraction is there. I still feel some attraction towards a female, but I pursued something that I would be more accepted in and happy. Most, especially West Indian women, if the men ever tell them that, hey, I'm attracted to both sex, that's a deal breaker for most women. Yeah. At least back then. So I'm like, I'm not going to pretend to be anybody that I am not. I'm just going to be my full self and love myself completely on, on both sides of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Good for you. It doesn't matter when it happens as long as it happens. Yeah. As, lo as long as you embrace your truth, I think that's for me part of our message. You know, we have been hearing from years now about DL men. But maybe if the space that they're in would be more acceptant and tolerant of them, more men will accept their truth and say, hey, I'm attracted to both. Mm -hmm. Or I'm attracted to whoever I'm attracted to. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a world? Wouldn't that be a world? Yep. Imagine that. Oh, that's why visibility matters. That's why y'all yep. are doing the good work. And I think even going to Jamaica. Um, yeah, we went back. After 37 we years, went I back. went back. And after 18 years, I went back. How's that? And we were approached by a few men A lot there of people, yeah. Who yeah. were pretty much on the DL. And they kind of whispered to us, you know, I'm so proud of you guys. You know, keep up the good work. You guys give me hope. Yeah. Oh. It, it was a reminder that this is not just for us, yes. right? And the whole platform is about representation. And yes, while there are different intersections of Black queerness, right, if you will, and there are other families that may look like ours, everyone's story is unique and special in their own right. And so it was a reminder that we're not doing this for likes and views, right? We're doing it to touch people. We're doing it to make sure people see themselves in us or at least one version of what might be possible for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yes, I'm yesing you. Like, because that's what I, uh, like with this whole pride extravaganza that you two are a part of, I could have titled this The Change Makers. Because every single interview I'm doing is folks who have put themselves out there and mm -hmm. shown up so that this world can become a better place. Really, truly, just by being you. Overcoming obstacles and even learning to love yourself yeah. when how you were raised, they told you you weren't lovable. Yeah. You know, that at 30 something when I'm like, screw what everybody else thinks or preach or, or even want to accept me. You don't have to respect me. You don't have to like me. And if we don't see eye to eye and who I am becoming, then you don't need to be in my space. Uh -huh. I love it. Oh, my God. But to be clear, but to be clear, that takes your different type of personality where you can cut someone off and not care tomorrow, right? right? Don't, don't, can, I cuss? can I cuss? Yes, please don't do. Yeah. Don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, good for he you. Doesn't, he doesn't. <laughs> but I will say that that is the attitude a lot of us aspire to have. Yeah. That is usually not how I many. I think I rub off on you over the years. My you are that my way. level of I don't give a fuck is different than your level. Of I don't give a fuck. I I give a fuck more than you do about <laughs> yeah, certain things. You do about Which certain things. I'm trying to get you to come to the other side. Right. It's okay to it, it, it's okay to have feelings. It's it's okay. <laughs> no, it, 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 acknowledging <laughs> someone's feelings of how they are uncomfortable with my truth. That's oh, not yeah, no, my no, battle no, no, to no. deal with. Not that so, part. But I'm but I'm specifically referring to the fact that a lot of people wish they were unfazed and unbothered by other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's just not the human condition, right? We care about something and someone, even if it's not the majority, there's someone's opinion that we care about. Well, and the only person opinion I did care about was my mother. Right. And if I was willing to cut my mother off 
to walk in my truth, who's who else is on the list that would trump her? Right, right, right. And if Jesus don't like me, it's okay, Jesus. We will talk when we get together. <laughs> but other than that, no. Yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah. Did you have to cut yeah. your mother off? I came close to it, especially defending him. I remember one incident where we had a two family in New York, and I was renting upstairs from her, and he came to visit, and she took it personal to say she don't want anybody in her house, you know, that live in that lifestyle. And I went in, I was, and he was right behind the door. Oof. And I was just oh, yeah. like, no, we're not doing that. Oh. First of all, I pay you rent. Second of all, I have rights as a tenant. You will never tell me who to bring and who not to bring in my house, period. Yeah. And if that's the case, I'll find someplace else to live because I want to save the respect factor between me and my mom. But at the end of the day, as a tenant, I had rights. And I'm like, I'm not doing this with you. Nope. Wow. <laughs> now we're great. You know, we're fine. But again, she had to go through, just like I had to go through my process of acceptance of myself and mm -hmm. loving me. She had to go through that. And also was told by older people around her to say, if you say you have the love of God in you, this is your son. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you worried about other people's opinion versus loving your son unconditionally? Mm -hmm. She's love. now mm -hmm. way better. Uh, and matter of fact, Richie is the one that ended up I planned, planning her I wedding. I planned her wedding. Did her makeup. I did her make. It was a whole thing. And that that process journey, just to give you some context into how long that took, right? Yeah. That wasn't until we were, we got married a week shy of our ninth dating anniversary, right? It wasn't until <sighs> year ten. ten where we were able to sit down and have a conversation. Wow. Right. And so that was a that's a, a she whole, didn't she didn't come to our wedding. She she was at our wedding. Uh. But one of the things I felt very strongly about is I did not want to raise children in a household where you go to grandma's house and dad isn't allowed mm. there. Like that that just wasn't gonna happen. That's where I put my foot mm -hmm. down. And so we were able to cultivate a relationship through the birth or the arrival of our son. And now she's the fiercest advocate for him. She loves her grandbabies. Now we have two boys now. And so you can't tell her that that's not, you know, those, that these two boys are not her grandsons. She, she actually have gone to that. Oh, for, yeah. And for us. Yeah. For us. Yeah. Like any, anybody, whether her mm -hmm. church members or, or mm -hmm. friends or neighbors, anybody who has something to say about us. My mom will put her Bible down and <laughs> give you a few choice words. But I think that's a good representation <laughs> or a good example of the fact that people's opinions can change. Yeah. And oftentimes people hold these beliefs, beliefs, excuse me, um, based on the things that they're taught, things that they see, and they're not exposed to what it actually is. My friend right? Gary and I would say, based on your programming, yes, we right. program. tend mm. to mm -hmm. judge others versus giving them space to show you who they are mm -hmm. and then make up your mind. Yeah. If you're going to love the person for who they are versus what we do behind closed doors. It's none of your business. None of your business. It's not about that. It's not about that at right. all. I love the parent stories that do a complete, what is it, 360, 180? I don't know. 180. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And even her husband, I mean, that was one of the conversations she had yeah. with him prior to saying, I do. If you're going to have a problem coming from Jamaica, dealing with my gay son, this is not going anywhere. Again, I think he was way different than most Jamaican men. I think, anyway. in fact, if you recall, when they were dating, she had come for Timothy's baptism. And he said to her before she came, don't go there and start criticizing. Like, yeah. if you're going to go, was, go for the right reasons, but don't go. He was supportive of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even before we formally met him, he was advocating for us. We call them our tribe. We, yeah. we have a certain amount of members in our tribe that is supportive of us mm -hmm. and love us unconditionally. They might not always agree with our theory or right. our way of mm -hmm. doing things, but we are also letting them know your method worked for you. Right. right. However it worked, we don't always have to bring your method in our life and in our marriage. Because I also think one of the things we said to each other when we got married, nobody ever gave us a handbook of what a healthy marriage looked like. We're going to have to create one. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. you, and it looks different for everybody, it right? It sure does. It sure does. And, yeah. you know, when you have such a visible platform like you do, you do need your tribe who will go to bat yeah. for you for sure. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you can get hit on all sides, right? We've, we've alluded to the children, but let's get into that. The littles. The littles. When did the talk of babies come in? And did you always know you were going to be parents? Did you think maybe it wasn't a possibility? Like, what's the conversation? How did, how did it start? I don't remember the exact, like, 
conversation we had, but I know that it was an understanding, so to speak, that both of us desired to have children. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, I started before you. Yes, he started on that journey. He has a whole story that we want to start getting into on this particular conversation where that was a journey he was on. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it didn't come to fruition. Uh -huh. um, not that what I'm talking about. That's not, I'm which, talking about me and my mom. Oh, yeah. Boys. Oh, I was talking about something else. Well, no. okay. You like to use that example. I don't quantify that as an example. But either way. But it is. Because yes. part, part well, of ahead. being... We'll share, please. Part of being a parent, I was co-parenting with my mother. I wasn't necessarily the babysitter. I was the one who Fair carried enough. them to my fashion show rehearsals, yeah. carried them to my dance rehearsals. Well, sorry. Them is he and his mother... Um, through foster care, adopted two, two boys, yeah. oh, one wow. uh, both two weeks old each when they came to their house. Yeah. And now one is 25, the other one is 21. Whoa. Yep. Yeah. So so he's gone through You already raised. Raising so I, I, was, I was comfortable with the idea when you come to me and says, hey, I, yes. could, I could see us having kids one day. Because most people, you know, they chose their path. Most people don't want to do that. They want to mm -hmm. live their life and travel the world and do yeah. all these things. We grew up talking about from day one, what the future would look like yeah. for us. And, and we didn't see, I mean, not that they don't exist, certainly, right? But this is before social media was really a mm -hmm. thing. There were two dad families mm -hmm. you can obviously see going around, but it wasn't something that was so prominently shared mm -hmm. and there was no spotlight was on no it. was platform. Yeah. Right, like even when I started this podcast five years ago, there weren't that many of us like mm -hmm. being as visible as we are now. Now it's a whole yeah. nother world, yeah. right? When you did see it, it was oftentimes interracial couples and a black child. Mm. You rarely ever saw two black men, right. right? As a demonstration of what a healthy family could be for a child. That was not something that you saw frequently. That's a good point. Right? Yeah. And when you did see it, right, it they were biological children. It wasn't necessarily yeah. that you saw someone opening up their homes to, and we joked about this before, you know, as we we're going through, so we did private adoption for our first son and then we adopted our second son through foster care so the first time for those who don't know there are preferences one gets mm -hmm. to have if you like to adopt you can check all the boxes for what you want we were like as long as we have a healthy baby we don't really care about gender we don't care about race we don't care about all the things like that wasn't something but we did joke and say wouldn't it be interesting to have two black men and be and have a white child in place with us and that was like a passing because you don't see that no right never um and if you do see it one of the parents identifies as caucasian yeah. right right and so um that that just wasn't our story and then uh, we got a call that that we were matched and we got the basic profile did not see a picture of our son we were told that he um you know mom is black father is latino and that's his much as we knew. It wasn't until the night before we met him in person that we finally saw a picture of him. So the misconception was that we chose to adopt a child that presented as white or fair-skinned or this grain of hair, and that just wasn't the case. I understand why that's a perception because oftentimes that's what you now see, but that really wasn't our our, our during our story. Because folks just think that, um, of course, you're going to want a white child, right? Like, right. That's the biasness in, in, in the other the biases are within themselves yeah. because now you're projecting your if you were going through that process what you would choose mm -hmm. so then when you see someone else which kind of match the idea you were thinking Just of put it there you know mm -hmm. challenge that person yeah. or that family to say hey why would you do that and honestly there are people who it is very rare not that it hasn't happened that someone would criticize us for what they believe our narrative and our story is and they themselves have not ventured to as they would call it, give a child a home. There are over 400,000 children in the foster care system, many of whom are black and brown, who they have not opened their homes mm -hmm. to, right? And so there's been a lot of... And also mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, so I, I think when we talked about that, one of the biggest thing he tried to shelter me from was to see certain comments. Oh, yeah. From, they come in hot and heavy. Because, again, the Jamaican in me would <laughs> have some choice words. <laughs> So it is best that I am the one that deals yeah, with filters the, the stuff before I the public scrutiny. Y'all get a, <laughs> but it sounds like you yeah. get a lot, a lot of it. We do, and in, in the beginning, in the beginning, beginning more so. And yeah. it, the interesting part that was completely surprising for me was we got it from our own community. Yes, right. That was something I did not expect. Mm. Right, I expected it from everyone else. I did not expect for our community, and not just the black, just the community in general, to have such a strong, strong visceral reaction yeah. to us adopting Timothy. Now, for those, not that we often share, but we 
Timothy identifies as black. His his birth mother is a black woman, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Just as deeply pigmented as me. Yeah. Right. And so, for all intents and purposes, our child is black. Yeah. Our our second son, his biological father, is in fact African American. He's black. And so we, but his mother, his mother is white. And and that's the first time actually we're sharing that. <laughs> but to me, it doesn't matter. Right. Right. And so, but it was just a very jarring reality just to say, hey, like. We're proud of the fact that we are now fam- I mean, we're now a family. We're proud of the fact that our community is able now to more visibly have children without the fear of you know or, or the backlash. putting yourself in debt trying to reproduce someone like yourself. <laughs> like that's the thing. We work really, really, really hard. It's really hard for us to get a family. So, however, our families come to us, it should be it should be celebrated. Celebrated, right? Right, right. right? and so that is that's really frustrating, yeah. and I'm sorry. Yeah. But the but it changed quickly, right? Because I think one of the things that I am very mindful of, and though I get advice on the contrary of don't push back, don't respond, ignore, I don't take that approach, right? Because I can't, well, you can't call yourself an advocate if you are silent. You can't show up and be any form of representation if you don't challenge ignorance. Yeah. Even if the ignorance is coming from people who look and are part of your own community, mm. right? And so I challenge it. And not because, again, anyone is owed an explanation, but one of the things that I wish I saw growing up was someone advocating for themselves and a demonstration of what that looks like, mm. right? And so even if P- I respond to people's comments that- But you do it in such a oh, I, political oh, oh, way. Oh, as Jamie knows, I will say <laughs> something that can be extremely cutting and, you don't, and oh, you're yeah. not even aware oh, yeah. that you've been cut. That's, but, but again, I don't want to meet ignorance with ignorance, right? right. right? I'm going to show a different way of-, of, I, of I, I do. Which is why you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why that is why that is why because i also I think like people online are bullies yes. they're looking to they bully be. yeah. behind the screen i'm like meet me at Publix. we can squash this not Publix. <laughs> hey <laughs> public parking lot is wide and oh, okay no we well we we we, 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 we do not condone violence <laughs> it's not about violence it's defending my family at any mm-hmm. given time i have the right to defend my yes. family yes. and whatever i post on social media if you don't like keep scrolling yeah why stop? Watch the full video and then, then to leave a comment. No, no, like, no. Multi- multiple. Get a job. Yeah. Multiple videos yeah. and multiple comments. Wow. So now, if the ignorance is in the same vein as what we typically see, it's easy to block, mute, delete, do all of those things. If it brings up an opportunity to educate people, then I'm going all in. Even if it's not the person who left. The Even comment. if it's not the person who left. I've, so I've seen I've, your I've response many, videos, yeah. and yeah. I think they're wonderful. And the response videos are usually gracious. They're usually mm-hmm. gracious because what I'm thinking, what I actually mm-hmm. say are two different things, right? Mm-hmm. But it's all it's always meant to challenge again the stereotype. We're busting the myths. We're busting the stereotypes, and we're showing this is what this is, and this is only one version of what this mm-hmm. is, and there is yeah. beauty in all the versions. Yes. Right? There are people who are in our community that is not on social media to present their life, right? But they're living their truth too. So Happily. if they come across these negative comments, they're probably more fearful to expose their kids or their family to yes, the world. Exactly. Some of the things I try to share with him, even before we took the platform, because I first started out on YouTube, YouTube. doing things, both health wise, because I worked in the hospital for so many years, I was bringing a, awareness to HIV mm-hmm. that it was rampant in our community at the time. And then when we decided to get together and we started to date, we rebranded. He was also on on occasion popping up on my uh, so called channel. And then we That's decided. So called channel. I mean, YouTube. I mean, I was just doing it for the fun of it. Call a thing a thing. It was but, important work. Mm-hmm. But it was to use that platform to educate. So as we got together and we decided to, hey, once we started the process with Timothy, I said, like, what do we call ourselves? Since he's such a <laughs> real housewife, half, fan. housewife fan, I like, you know, I'm saying, well, what about the real dads in New York? And then we, we Googled it and we checked it out. Yeah, we sure. were actually, <laughs> we, we had filmed a special for Vice and my cousin Esther was uh, there helping that day. We went out to dinner and we actually at that dinner table, it was C. Ty Bistro in Williamsburg uh-huh. on North 6th Street. Never forget it, right? We were sitting at a table. We're like, let's start a page. Like, what do we call ourselves? And she and I watched Housewives religiously every and I don't every Sunday. He <laughs> he criticizes my junk course, TV watching. I love it was junk all TV. about Housewives, all about Wendy Williams at the time. It was all about oh that. Yes. Um, and so the three of us were at the table, and that was the name that was born. Um, I didn't know that. And so I yeah. love that. Um, yeah. you, you got to reach out to Andy and really start the Real Dads of New York. 
we've been tagged in so many things. And I think he at one point was on the start of show with dads. I don't think that went anywhere. Okay. So no, no reality show for us. Even if we did, it had to be something positive. We, would, we would rather curate our own. Yeah. Our own. Thing. Yeah. And I'm all and about that. He's pretty good at being dramatic with his um, <laughs> twirls. They're not, they're not surprised. I, 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 <laughs> I love surprised. all of the posts. Um, I want to know what made you decide on adoption? Like, how did you decide the route. And it's, I, and I know that like with two guys, you have a little less options than we do who have two uteruses. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, we, we started to talk about realistically what it would look like. And I'm like, since I've been through the process with my two brothers, I said to him, there's a ton of kids in the system that mm -hmm. you need to check out and see if we could play. Well, not even just that. As a as an educator, yeah. like I was firsthand witnessing children unfortunately being removed from their yes. homes. You were, and, you were coming on some days crying. Yes. Like, like, yeah. I had in tears because now that means number one, it's traumatic for the child, mm -hmm. it's yeah. traumatic for the parent, it's traumatic for the entire family unit. And oftentimes these kids were going to places that weren't going to care for them any better than their safe. parents could. Yeah. And it wasn't safe. And then I would see them come back to school dirty, disheveled. <sighs> and I used to personally go out and buy clothes. I would, yeah. I, I, because to me, like you're Those part of, you are, you are part of my community. And so yeah. I'm not going to sit there. Despite, and you, you, you were doing a leadership. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was a principal, so it was still my job, mm -hmm. but the human aspect of that, I'm like, these, these kids don't deserve that. And I think one time a family did approach me to say, Hey, like the social worker did, excuse me. It's like, you know, anyone here able to? And I'm like, I wish I could. Oh, and I wow. wasn't certified right. at the time. And also, too, I didn't have the benefit of growing up with my father around. Mm -hmm. And so though I had really strong male figures in my life, my uncles, my grandfather, et cetera, I know what it feels like to want a dad mm -hmm. and not have one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so to me, it was an easy, I didn't think twice. Of course, the selfish part of you is like, well, Will my bloodline live on and all those sorts of things? But as fast as that question was kind of came to mind, mm -hmm. it was as fast as it left because mm -hmm. we knew that still an, it was still an option. But we took the option that we felt was most, frankly, like we had most access to at that moment, yeah. right? Which was in our financial situation, we were blessed enough to be able to afford private adoption. But we always knew that foster care would also be some way part of our journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did actually explore the foster care system before we went private. But at that time in New York, and even still to a degree, the system is a mess. Right. Yeah. Right. And so there were so many things that just kept getting in the way of us being able to open our homes to a child. And it wasn't, it wasn't us necessarily. It was scattered information. This form was incorrect. That form was, it was mm. so much bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. And I saw the back end of bureaucracy not really helping with the outcome that they wanted, which was a child in a healthy and safe they space. Stay, they stay longer in a foster care system than they deserve to. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. And so in this case, we decided private adoption was going to be our first entree into that, parenthood. That, that was another shit show too. That was another shit show. Oh, really? Um, Why? I will say this. Our story was un unconventionally fast from the start of the process to the end of the process, meaning the time that we were matched and he came home was three months. That Whoa. does not happen. No, that's that not. That is not a... Yeah. Uh, Right. Yeah. So it was a bit of an outlier from that perspective, mm -hmm. but please go ahead. For me, hearing the cost of what it costs and where the money actually went after we finished the process, was hard. I was disappointed. Yeah. Most of the mothers who, number one, is in a financial strain. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're giving up a part of themselves because they cannot, in a safe environment, raise this child. And for the betterment of this child's future, they decided to find someone who they believe will provide and nurture and care. But still, I think after they hand it over or sign it over, they're like tossed to the side mm. to go back to doing the same behavior that put them in this situation yeah. right. to begin and with. And to be, to be fair, our agency, who we won't disclose, and, and not that we have an issue with them per se. Again, our, is our, our, our personal experience with them wasn't it was bad. Good. It, was, it was good. It was good. It was just the fact that when you think about a birth mother. All the things they went through. They went through. Whether they physically. say to themselves, this is a path I want to take, or they find themselves being one of the only paths they can mm -hmm. take. Not everyone's story is the same. But, but they are afforded mental health services, I believe, in perpetuity. That's my understanding. 
Mm -hmm. right? Uh But if you look at the level of advocacy needed to ensure that that birth birth mother is consistently availing herself Mm -hmm. of those services, Mm -hmm. how many people actually do? Right. And that that was where, that's what got me because wraparound services are really important, right? And if you're just saying you have access to it, but not creating the conditions where they can avail themselves of it, then you're not really doing... And I think not only for private adoption, we were bothered by also going through the process with for Curtis, we recognize the bullshit that the systems are so terrible. broken that most people just take what they can get out of it, meaning their child, the child that they want to create their family, but nobody is going to take the initiative, which is a part of what I said to him in the past. Our platform should bring awareness to the systems and address it, even if it's just talking it out in the air, to say, we need to fix the system yeah, for the needs sake to be, of the kids. There needs to be far greater urgency yeah. when it comes to fixing some of the bureaucratic, bureaucratic issues mm-hmm. and prejudices that exist. I'll yeah. give you an example. So we posted a video, mm-hmm. which, was, which was humorous in nature because that's on brand for us. But the message was very clear, right? Someone denying us, right, the ability to have a family solely on the basis of the fact that we are two men, uh-huh. right? When you, when you look at profiles of children and there are heart galleries, they call them, that are tied to state agencies mm-hmm. that show children who need homes and they will very clearly say the type of home that this child will best thrive in. And we would say, great, check, check, check. We, we meet all that criteria on paper at least. Mm-hmm. And we would a- apply, that's how it works. It feels really strange to say that out loud, but that's kind of mm-hmm. how it goes. You submit an interest, yeah. right? Hundreds of children for years. Now, this is for adoption, or this is for foster. This is a- adoption through foster. Gotcha. Care. So mm-hmm. these children already f- have had their parental rights terminated, gotcha. correct, and they're ready to be adopted, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you would see we, we would we would submit our interest, right? There was a never forget. There was a there was a family, three children. We were willing to take up to three children, right? Open our home yeah. to that. That was a big shift, but again, we wish we could take everyone. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't. Right. But it was uh, two boys and a little girl in Florida, not too far from where we live, based on the air, based on the heart gallery that we were looking on. Mm-hmm. All of the criteria, right? We need someone who's a fierce educational advocate. We need someone who best thrive with a, with um, one of the parents. Strong who, male figure. A strong male figure. Mm-hmm. Best thrive with someone who is in the home or works from home. Uh-huh. Best thrive with other children in the home, right? They would need to be the oldest of the children. All the things, Check. all the things Check. We, we, we checked. We were, I submitted interest, let's just say it was 12 o'clock, five minutes later, declined. There's no way you read our full home study. There was no, you saw the picture, you saw the names and you were done. Wow. And that, that kept happening time after time, month over month. So it became very discouraging. Now, we were always told in this process, it would take a bit longer than it took for private adoption. But there was no way that you couldn't tell me there was there wasn't some prejudice involved in that. Mm-hmm. We knew Curtis was coming mm-hmm. at that time because we found out about Curtis's case specifically in June. Mm-hmm. Someone reached out to us. Yeah. So someone actually saw our profile on the Heart Gallery and reached out to us to say, hey, we have this case. We read your home study. We think based on your profile, right, and all your strengths, that this would be a good placement for this child. To be transparent, there are three other families that also we believe may be good fits for them. Are you interested in learning more? So we said, of course, right? Again, this is before knowing what he looks like. It, right. it, it was just, here's his name. This is how old he is. And this is, just, this is the situation that he finds himself in. Is it okay? Right? Like that's just, that's what we do, mm-hmm. right? And so long story short, we had to go through several rounds of interviews just to make sure that we are truly a good match for him because we have to be a good match for him. He's a good match for us. We already have a child with to make sure that they're also going to be paired well. And so we had interviews, a few of them. We were transparently told that there were other families they were looking at. We were the only same gender loving family. They were very transparent about that. Um, not that that held any difference to them necessarily. And then we went away to Jamaica. We came back, had another interview. And then I went to New York actually for work and about a week later we had found out. So I found out that we were going to be dads for a second time on August 15th Mm -hmm. of 2022. I did not tell him immediately. My birthday was uh, five days later and we had a birthday party here at my house and, you know, 
Carl likes to do speeches <laughs> for events, and I don't particularly <laughs> love speeches for events. But nonetheless, I he, don't do speech. I acknowledge the moment because we might miss the moment when we don't acknowledge it and give thanks for those who are around us. I like that. I like that. So I then surprised him with the box. It was a gift from Timothy to, to his, his, brother. his brother. So it said, for my baby brother, Curtis. Now is when he found out. So, because at that point, and he, like, my fam, my and mom he kept, was here. He kept asking, have you heard anything? I'm like, no. I was annoyed with him. I've heard anything <laughs> second so long. So to answer your question, there was a long-winded way of saying, yes, we always knew we wanted to be dads. Yes, we did both private and foster public adoption. Both of them had their challenges, yeah. but both of them are meant Right, for children yeah. to find and again, a forever home. We bring up the idea of system being broken. Mm-hmm. Just in case anybody else out there that's working in it's the some, system, some, important. don't take your job for granted mm. and just for a paycheck. It is necessary to see the value in each child's mm-hmm. eyes and know that they deserve to be loved mm. and not be placed in a, in a space yeah. where they're like tossed in the closet until someone come find them. Yeah. We need to be more proactive as a community of people, black, white, green, and in between. Mm-hmm. We need to do better than what we've been doing. Mm. Yeah. And I also think that not everyone's advocacy looks the same. And I yeah. will always say that some people use their voices in a more discreet way. Mm-hmm. And that's fine, mm-hmm. right? Probably, like, I don't think advocacy means you always have to be on the front lines, visible as loudest. I don't believe that. But I do believe that if we have a collective responsibility as creators to bring attention and awareness to the causes that affect our community. And one of those causes that affects our community is access to building a family, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the system is just so broken. And so we do that through humor usually or through educational videos that respond to people's ignorant comments. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the ignorance is not because they are intending to be harmful necessarily, although one could argue argue you could just DM us the question and we've answered it, right? But nonetheless, we use those situations as vignettes to advocate, to show and bring awareness to situations that many of us find ourselves in, but find ourselves silenced in, right? And so, like, no one asked us to do that, right? But that's just something that we feel passionate about because if you don't do it, there are not well, enough people who are. Right. I, would, I would say that has been a part of my upbringing from church days when I was involved in the church and being a youth leader in the church. So even when we met, a part of me saw in him at that age the leader. A leader that most people, even he himself didn't recognize mm-hmm. yet. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, even if it was just having a relationship as a friend with him, I knew that I wanted to be around to see him blossom mm-hmm. into the fruit that he will become to feed whoever is going to take a bite. And I think I've seen so many over the years, and I've told him I'm proud of him, but again, I just want to let him know again that I've seen so many youth that that. has been under his leadership Mm -hmm. as a principal that see him as a modern day Martin Luther King, Mm -hmm. where he stands up in his truth and stands for what's right. And that is leading by example. So those Mm -hmm. kids who see him, even now, you went out the so other day. So many kids who to when, meet the parent and the, and the child. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the benefits of social media is that you get to reconnect with people, right? And so a lot of those children that I had the pleasure of serving as their principal or as their superintendent are now like in college, or some of them are graduating from college, and that's like a weird. It makes you feel a little bit old. But you're old, uh, baby, you're old. You're getting. Yeah. I do not accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no, um, no, but it, it, it's nice for them to reach out and say, "Mr. Siegler, is that you? You know, thank you so much." And some of them have come out right and have said, "You were my first example of what this could look like," and thank you so much. And some of the parents are like, you know, even before meeting you, I had my own thoughts and opinions about, you know, being gay and part of our community. But I now have to advocate for my child to be where you were able to show them that they could be, right? And so like, that's a very, I take that work very personally. Mm-hmm. And so we, I did have lunch with um, one, of, one of my former, we, you know, we call them mm-hmm. scholars and his his mom. And just to see him off to college, it, it was it's a, it's a great thing to know that your impact is felt even when you don't realize yeah. it, yeah. right? And that is... This just, is why yeah. I say don't take it for granted that you have a platform. Yeah. You Use have, it well. yeah. Even as a working in the field that you are working in, don't ever take it for granted that it's just a paycheck. There's mm-hmm. somebody watching mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's not normally the adults. It's normally the children who are seeing and, mm-hmm. you know, seeing your example and going, I could do that mm-hmm. or I can mm-hmm. become that or 
you said something to them that inspired them to now feel I am worthy of living yeah. this life. It's important. That's why we do it. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, I say all the time on the show that our families are some of the most intentional families out there. Just, just, yeah. just listen to all the things you went through to get your children. Just listen to all the planning you went through. Right. Every single time I interview a same-sex couple about how they made their families, it is always a very different story, but the main point is clear. We are so intentional with these families. Very. Extremely, Mary. right? Which is, which is why it's so hurtful to see people criticize the beauty of our families. And they because, the truth or the journey. Yeah. 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 And I would argue those examples are what perpetuate cycles of yeah, being broken. Typical yeah. stereotypes. Right. And it's 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 unfortunate. But I think one of the things I'm heartened by is that the generations coming up now are more free in their thinking. Yeah. They're challenging the norm. Mm-hmm. The norm. Look, as great as our we believe our generations are, the next generation, they're the future leaders, right? And so we owe it to them to have and create space where they can explore the world freely without harm. Mm. And that is hopefully one we are one aspect of that journey for those of us in this community that are not politically involved and think that that has nothing to do with me we need to wake up and recognize also that for the future of the next generation coming behind us just like someone before us fought stonewall and took beatings and stood in their truth for their right to live and survive. We have to do the same for our kids Mm -hmm. that is coming behind us. And I think so many things, things are happening now politically that they're trying to push us back in the closet. And I'm one Jamaican that says, I'm not going back in. I've been out too many years to go back in. So Mm -hmm. by any means necessary, we are gonna stand for our kids' rights to live their truth and for us to live our truth. And using our platform is one of those things we're going to use, as well as learn about our political leaders within our community. Unfortunately, we're in a... And you're in Florida. You're on the front lines. Yeah, we're in Florida now. And our entire existence feels like... Yeah. Are you scared? No. No. Yes. I'm scared for what it means for our kids. Mm. Unfortunately, it's not our first time that we've had to be acutely aware. I used to use that term to make fun of me a lot. Yes. Not our first rodeo, right? We, we, are, we are very aware that people don't always want us in places. Mm-hmm. And that is not a new mm-hmm. experience for us, unfortunately. Right. What is new, though, is the level of Papa Bear 